Now, I'm sure you've all used Google before, but Google Stadia, that's something brand new. And here to tell us about it uh, is the vice president and GM of Stadia at Google, Phil Harrison. People understand this was so important to Phil that you moved your family over to the States from England because you're so excited about this project and what it represents. No high-end PC required. Uh, it takes a company with the scale and uh, infrastructure deployment of Google right. to be able to do this properly. And that's a key thing. It's like this is not a pipe dream coming in, you know, five years. It's like you said, this November, people will be able to buy in and literally get that controller and start playing across a bunch of devices. But you're, you're still buying the games, right? Some people thought maybe it was going to be a subscription service where you were going to sort of pay a subscription price like a Netflix and get everything. But the model right here is something like the Founders Edition. You're going to buy that and then you're going to have sort of a monthly charge eventually for it. And then you'll also pay some amount of money, like whatever it is, to buy each individual game like you would in the past, right? It's up to the gamer how they want to right. engage with our platform. But remember that the games are not linked to a particular device anymore. Right. That one purchase gives you the value across your TV, your PC, your laptop, your tablet, and your phone. So any screen in your life. And um, we think that that is a, a transformational moment for, for gamers. It's only $129 to get into the founders. So will you and so this is something that we will lean into. And yes, over time, it will take developers a little bit of time yeah. to unlock all of those features. Short order from now, you'll see uh, publishers uh, starting to think about their own subscriptions as well. Buying a game that you don't really own at the end of the day, that people have this fear that it's like, you know, I'm going to buy this and Google's going to shut it down, or I'm not going to have access to it, or I want to be able to download it. Google is and incredibly committed to this yes. platform. Um, yeah. I'm personally dedicated yes. to this platform. But you, uh, under you understand why gamers have that trepidation? Of course. 100% committed. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're building studios, yeah. plural. Um, we're working with second party developers to bring games uh, yeah. to our platform. Well, it allows us to be uh, completely screen agnostic. It allows right. us to deliver the same game experience to a phone or to a TV and everything in between. I love this video because it aged like the finest of milks. Did you guys know that the gaming rental company Gamefly had a game streaming service as recent as 2018? You pay the subscription fee and you have access to a whole host of games that you can stream to your TV. The kicker, of course, was that you needed a smart TV and an internet connection. Something that I think most people listening would agree is a pretty normal setup to have. This streaming service launched in 2015 and took them a meager three years to close the service down. I know some of you are on here wondering, why are we talking about Gamefly on a video about Stadia? And the reasons are because Gamefly realized the pitfalls of cloud-based gaming before Google even decided to get involved in the game streaming industry. The same year Gamefly closed down their streaming service is the exact same year Google hosted their very first beta of Stadia, and a whole whopping year later in 2019, they would officially launch the service. It was glorious. Stadia exploded onto the gaming scene with a whole whopping 12 games. 12. 12 fucking games. Mostly because Google offered lackluster incentives to game companies and publishers to create and port titles to Stadia. Developers mostly saw the service as a way to not make money, and overall, they were right. It also didn't help much that it ran like shit and was buggier than a deer carcass on the side of the road. Which is an apt comparison, I think, because Roadkill Deer and Stadia have one major thing in common. They're both fucking dead. So incompetent was Stadia's leadership, they didn't even have the common courtesy to inform staff and developers of the fact that Stadia itself was winding down its operations. Numerous Stadia employees have come out of the woodwork to say they had little advance notice of the shutdown, and developers who were already on the service are now left holding the bag when it comes to angry customers. The worst part about this? When people asked Stadia directly via social media if the service was going to close down, Google straight up lied to them. Two 
months before the service officially announced its shutdown, Stadia went on their Twitter to tell the world they were in fact not closing and planning on expanding the service for the foreseeable future. I mean, seriously, look at this shit. Literally, look at it. This is Google officially lying to customers. I frankly am not entirely sure this doesn't count as false advertising. Stadia engineers had it even worse with only hours of notice before Google shot Stadia in the back of the head. Because Stadia was always going to die. It was never going to revolutionize the industry like Google had hoped. A sad little life marked with a fair amount of mediocrity. It took three years for Gamefly to close their streaming service, and hilariously enough, that's the exact same amount of time it took Google to shut down Stadia. The signs of failure were apparent from the very earliest days of Stadia's inception. A common issue that cloud-based gaming has is data caps and ISPs. In a now legendary case of foot and mouth syndrome, Stadia boss Phil Harrison famously said that he wasn't worried about data caps from ISPs. The ISPs have a strong history of staying ahead of consumer trends. And if you look at the history of data caps in those small numbers of markets, and it's actually a relatively small number of markets that have data caps, the trend over time, when music streaming and download became popular, especially in the early days, when it was not necessarily legitimate, data caps moved up. Then, with the evolution of TV and film streaming, data caps moved up, and we expect that will continue to be the case. Mm. ISPs have a long and illustrious history of doing exactly none of that. <laughs> <laughs> These are the very same ISPs that didn't raise data caps. Instead, they lowered them and tried to destroy Netflix. It is so incredibly laughable that Phil compares gigabyte heavy games to music streaming, which comes in at a much lower data rate. And you can be sure as shit skeptical when Google's brilliant business strategy involves just basically assuming ISPs will get behind Google, which is a competitor, ISP. Because of course that's how they run their fucking business! ISPs are smart, and they understand that they're in the business of keeping customers happy, and keeping customers with them for a long time, Harrison said. Oh god, Phil, you silly Stupid boy. Google Plans literally had guessing as a major component of Stadia, a service basically run on the whims of a forest dwelling witch that carelessly throws handfuls of chicken bones onto the dirt and tells you the future. Plus, can we seriously have a discussion about ISPs here? Since when the fuck do ISPs care about what customers want? That industry is so monopolized now that they can do whatever they want, even if there's consumer backlash. Who else you gonna go to? You only have, like, four choices. But to hell with the future, because like Google's past, Stadia merely adds one more headstone to the plethora of gravestones of past business ventures that, like Stadia, are dead and soon to be all but forgotten. To be exact, there's 275 individual products created and ended by Google. Some of these services had literal months of lifespan, such as Google Clips, Google Glass, and the Nexus Player. Well, hello, Nexus Player. Don't you look fucking familiar. This is Google, folks. A company with seemingly more cash than brains. Google conceptualized new ideas by, I'm assuming, taking barrelfuls of cash and throwing them into an incinerator only to peddle new gimmicks while their old cash burns. Spouting the same old corporate word salad about how they're dedicated to the new thing they're interested in and will support it forever and ever in perpetuity, only to pull the plug when the service 
isn't embraced by the public after Google did everything in its power to ensure whatever pet project it was currently trying to shove down your throat was not marketed or actually supported at all. But hey, at least they did that refund thing.